How's everybody doing this afternoon? Good. A couple of you are doing good, I guess. My name is Jeff Chang. Um, I'm an author, as advertised. I'm also an activist. Uh, I work with the Culture Group and with Culture Strike, which I'm going to talk a little bit about um, in a minute. Um, I wanted to say that I'm uh, bummed that Rebel Diaz could not be here today, but I support uh, their position and I support the boycott. So all of you here are interested in the intersection of art and change, right? Um, and so all of you, I'm sure, have had this moment where you've met up with folks who have been like, art and change don't belong together. You either make art or you make change, right? And you're frustrated. How do you deal with this? So me and a bunch of my friends actually put together uh, what follows as a way to try to begin a discussion with some of those folks. So this is how it starts. This is a wave. A wave is a very powerful metaphor, of course, for change. So in 2008, when Barack Obama got elected, they called it a wave election. And in 2010, when the Tea Party swept into office, they called that a wave election too. When we think about change, we often think about it in terms of events. An election happens, a piece of legislation passes, there's a judicial decision that comes down. But in scientific and lexical terms, if you really get down to it, right, a wave is not just an event. It's not just seeing this wave break over a reef, and this one's in Tahiti, but it's also a process, right? It's a process of all of these forces that are gathering around the South Pole, uh, both underwater and atmospheric, pushing across thousands of miles of open ocean to meet this V-shaped reef on the south shore of Tahiti, then boom, the Te Aupo wave. It's the wave at Te Aupo. So what if we thought of culture, not just uh, in terms of events, or what, I'm sorry, what if we thought of change, not just in terms of events, but as a process? If we did, we'd see that there's a vast world of all of these invisible forces that are creating movements that are pushing back and forth against each other all the time. So let's think of culture as an ocean. Culture is the realm of ideas, images, and stories, right? It's where we find community. It's where we form identity. It's where we express our values. Culture is where public sentiment is formed and moved. It's where most of the people are at most of the time. Politics is where some of the people are at some of the time. So while we downplay culture, it's the deep ocean that we're all immersed in every day. It's the narrative that we're all immersed in every day. So I say all of that to make this grand leap of imagination and to say this. Cultural change, and I think all of you actually believe this, cultural change always precedes political change. Cultural change always precedes political change. So you can think of Jackie Robinson, right? Taking the field seven years before the Brown versus Board of Education decision. Or Ellen DeGeneres, right? Coming out on TV years before uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell gets repealed, years before Obama decides to support same-sex marriage. You can think of hip hop, which didn't start as a movement, uh, a cultural movement, or a political movement with a manifesto. It started for a way, uh, as a way of abandoned kids forgotten kids to be able to figure out ways to have fun. But by the time you get to the 2000s, right, hip hop is the banner under which thousands upon thousands upon thousands of folks are beginning to organize in order to, I'm sorry, let me get you this, in order to get people elected. And so hip hop, in a lot of ways, changed the narrative. Every moment of major social change requires a collective leap of the imagination. And it's often accompanied by a mass explosion of creativity. The signs are all around us. Cultural change always precedes political change. Now, this is not to suggest that there's some sort of mystical relationship between culture and politics, right? That there's some sort of one-to-one -one process, that there's an instrumentality going on here, right? You had Obama as a symbol of change, a symbol of progress, and then you had Obama as a symbol of a lack of progress, a lack of change. So in 2000, we formed a group called Culture Strike to focus on trying to shift the narrative around immigration rights and migrant justice. 
the debate had gotten mired in a lot of respects in a very formalistic kind of way, right? The language was literally, are you legal or are you illegal? And so we looked at ways of trying to use art strategically and culture strategically. And we began doing cultural organizing. We took a group of writers and artists uh, to meet writers and artists in Arizona. And we've done, since then, we launched a website. Um, we've done all kinds of different types of events across the country and done art exhibitions and readings and so forth. And we believe it's had an effect. Storytelling has an effect. It's galvanized the grassroots and it's moved the media, especially around the issue of undocumented young people. And so this is a piece by Julio Salgado, an undocu queer artist. And this is a cover story by Jose Antonio Vargas that came out this past summer. When the Time article came out, 12 hours after it hit the web, Obama announced def deferred action for undocumented young people and said that they could get work permits. Abraham Lincoln once said, public sentiment is everything. With public sentiment, nothing can fail. Without it, nothing can succeed. Consequently, he who molds public sentiment goes deeper than he who enacts statutes or pronounces decisions. He makes them possible or impossible to be executed. Cultures where we introduce ideas, attach emotions to concrete change, foster enthusiasm for our values. Culture is where we change the narrative. It helps us to imagine what change can look like, and then it makes it feel not just possible, but inevitable. So artists, whether anybody wants to confess to it or not, and we're gonna do it right here, artists are central to social change. They're not the kind of thing where, call the artist, because we're having a rally, we need to get a poster done, we need somebody to spit a poem, or do a song, or play a chord, right? <laughs> artists are central. Artists shouldn't just be playing around in the waves, they should be making the waves. So in Culture Strike and Culture Group, we believe it's important to build out two areas of infrastructure. Cultural organizing, which is another way of saying partying, <laughs> and cultural strategy, which is another way of saying, let's think this through a little bit after we party. <laughs> At its deepest level, culture moves people. And so this is why we believe that we can move the local, the national, and the global imagination, why we believe that we can make waves, and we believe that it all starts by investing in artists and changing the culture. Thank you very much.